go to um, this one here, the dats. Um, that's a component, and uh, I wanted to. <coughs> if you just zoom out again, uh, mm -hmm. because if we don't. Pardon me? If you zoom out, oh, yeah. if we just don't look when you do it, then um, it's, right it's here, gone. It's a good way of whenever you're lost. Yeah. Is, uh, we can't see it really. Look at the. the you could have just gone yeah, that, here and just select like that. that. And so you're if you're ever sometimes lost, because uh, if you look down and we move, um, that should give you an idea of at least where to look. One use is just to put a bunch of raw text into a text dot. You know, just open it up and type stuff in. So that's just raw text. And um, basically that's what this, this is. Um, I'm using that to generate uh, an image using the um, text top like you were doing before, making the Halden word that was composited. So in this case, I'm using the text in a dot, and there's not much formatting capability, but you can just use it to generate a raster image from that using fonts and point sizes and all that. Dats are places to hold uh, just simple text, uh, tables, which are rows and columns of uh, strings. That's where we keep our shaders. So when we make OpenGL shaders, we put the, the text of the shaders in dats, uh, used to hold JSON, XML, anything that's uh, or formatted, uh, and it's also where we put all of our Python scripts and modules. It all comes into text stats like this thing. An alternate way of getting data from MIDI, open sound control from the keyboard, multi-touch input, serial, laser data, and so on. So they, they come in as uh, text strings in DATS sometimes, which then might get converted to chops. Then um, protocols from other software programs. So protocols like TCPIP and Open Sound Control and uh, other things come in via DATS because there's text in, embedded in it usually. And so we use DATS that pull in network data come in via uh, these, uh, these specific DATS. And also uh, so much of the user interface of Touch Designer is using uh, DATS and other operators too. So. Uh, one of the things is you, you can actually put your cursor in many places in the interface uh, or any table, and if you put your cursor here and press F10, you actually go to the uh, component that defines this button here. So we're now inside the component that defines this button. If we roll our wheel out and turn the viewer on, this button here is actually this thing down here. So this is actually part of a bigger container, which is the whole timeline thing, which contains the button. So, you know, Touch Designer is made out of itself. Is it? Crazy. Um, except for some parts. Um, this part isn't yet. Uh, a lot of the UI is, and um, so we're gradually converting everything over to use. So, so you could actually uh, change the interface? Yeah. Okay. Um, but you can do that in any panel. So the, the stuff that um, Ben was showing you, where he had the three buttons lined up together in a panel, if uh, you have that panel up on a floating window and you just press F10 with your cursor, over, you can pop into it. So it's a way of exploring your networks without having to find them and 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 then go through the path at the top here. You can just point at it and say, what's inside here? And also there's, there's dots that have specific information about uh, what the machine is uh, set up to be. So for instance, um, uh, if you double click here and bring up the monitors dat, um, it tells us um, how many monitors, you know, it tells us information about the monitors that are attached to the computer. So this is how we get at laying out panels on different parts of uh, different screens. Um, click on bounds and get the bounds of all the monitors together. So this, this dat is you know, built in and gives all this um, information about the screens that are attached to your, your machine. If we look uh, a little bit deeper at a um, ramp top, bring up a ramp top, and um, if you click the little no notch at the bottom here, this notch here means that there's another node that's attached to this. Uh, if you click on it, it'll pop it out. This thing is feeding data into the ramp top. So every ramp top has a table attached to it, 
And I can go change the table by going into it and directly editing it by hand, or by going to the uh, interface and adding new colors in. So um, this, I manually docked this uh, thing. So hang on, if I click this, undock. Okay. So I I had this that which held the information, which I then fed to the text. That's the text source, but I I don't have it dock to it, so I wanted to actually put it down here and hide this away. So whenever you want to dock something, you can right click on the node and say dock to. So it, it lets you uh, choose a node to dock to and just pick one. And now it's docked to it. So now it's hidden away, so you don't need to look at it um, anymore. And you can pop it out, open anytime you want. But whenever you move this, uh, it goes with it. And also when you copy and paste uh, this node, it also copies and pastes everything that's docked to it. So it's a way of kind of hanging things together if you want to um, encapsulate things in that way. Okay. Here is a, uh, a web dat which um, fetch something from the internet and get our home page. We'll look at a shader of, um, uh, let's say, a Fong shader. That's don't know about JSON inherently. It's just it's just text as far as the data is concerned. Uh, in the web one, uh, how do I scroll? Uh, how do, do you read the text? Yeah, you, you open it up yeah. with the viewer active, and there's a scroll bar on the right. Oh yeah, there it goes. Yeah. And uh, or or yeah. use the roller wheel to roll yeah. down, yeah. Yeah. and uh, you can use the middle mouse wheel uh, button to zoom into yeah, it and stuff like that. Uh, or yeah, actually you can, you can actually move the nodes if you if if the viewer is open, you can move the nodes by clicking on the bar below. But you can also um, uh, get a viewer up. Right. So we have it set up to use our Sublime editor, and then you can edit it using Sublime as well, or whatever editor you have set up for your uh, um, your system. So that's that. And um, so the Fong shader has the ability to output its shader code into DATS. Just as an example, I'll take any movie in top image. And um, I'll give it a color that as the color map. Okay, so this is my shader is set up with a texture. Um, I can then go to its parameters here on the first page. It says output shader, so you can click on this parameter and say output it close by, and it'll end up giving you three nodes. Box, box click it, and you can see um, what this translates to. So this Fong shader is exactly the same as, with this texture on it, is as exactly the same as this Fong GLSL shader with these two GLSL shader uh, source code in, inside it. And the, they have the stuff in here that's um, reading the texture map, whatever. So it's the shader that was built on the fly based on the parameters that I have set up here and the features that I've set up here. It'll generate the GLSL code from that, so you can actually go and edit it from that starting point. Okay, um, so we start off with this table here, and uh, we're going to want to just convert these two columns um, from um, Fahrenheit to uh, <coughs> centigrade. So this is uh, today's weather that uh, I t typed in earlier, but. Uh, I have an American phone, so it'll only give me temperature in, in Fahrenheit, so we'll have to convert it to centigrade. <clears throat> okay, so right-click on the output of it, and bring out a select dat. So you notice uh, here we have select dat, just like we have a chop and a top. So select, in this case, just selects pieces of rows and columns. 
And um, the select has a lot of ways of doing that. So the top part here is for selecting which rows you want, and the bottom part of it is for selecting which columns you want. We don't want the top row, we want the rest of it. So we can extract rows and just click on the menu and pick by index. So we want to select by index and this stuff pops up and we don't want to start with row zero. So the row number on DATS is right here starting from zero and the column numbers start from zero. So you put in uh, the starting index of one. Okay, so we've stripped out the first row and we'll keep the rest and uh, we'll want to get um, just these two columns. So there's uh, a bunch of ways of doing it. So uh, we want to extract it via these column names. So we want to extract from low to high uh, and everything between, which is nothing. So again, go to extract columns and by uh, name and just type in low here enter and high okay so you've extracted the two columns and their numbers only and um, just like we have in shops we have the math job, we also have it evaluate to type in Python expressions. In this case, we're going to put in an evaluate that. So um, evaluate that on the output. And this one allows us to put in small chunks of Python expression to modify the data coming in. So let's type in the, an expression here. I'm just going to copy and paste it in, but um, go into expression mode here. Let's hit, click the blue thing and just type in what you're seeing here. And alt e, right? Yeah. Control oh, control plus. plus. Okay. Okay, that's what we're putting into the expression. Okay, something wrong here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, when there's Python in expression, you can actually look at the parts of it to try and understand what it's about. This part of uh, the Python expression, me means this node. Uh, the cell input cell means the cell that's coming in. So when it's building this cell here, it's it's using this input cell, so me dot input cell means 36. It takes that, subtracts 32, which means it gives you uh, 4, and then um, multiplies by 5 over 9. That converts uh, uh, Fahrenheit to centigrade, right? That's the conversion, 5 over 9, and that gives you a number. If I had, if I had taken this int out, for instance, it would have given me um, that exact number, um, 2.77777 uh, degrees centigrade is the same thing as 37 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, because I didn't want to see this, I was okay with int, uh, rounded numbers, then this thing called int converts it to an integer. So it just takes that off and leaves you with that part. So if you go int, int, open bracket, and put close bracket here, it takes what's inside and converts it to integer. Does that kind of make sense? Here's a way of doing it with uh, with chops. That to chop. And multiply. Some math. Um, minus 32. Uh, 32. Um, and multiply by five or five over nine. On on the op page in math, you can convert things to integer. 
output. No, channel for column. Uh, okay. I convert a column to a channel, and then, yeah. And then, and then from here, I can do a transpose. Actually, just go drill down here a little bit on the alternate method. We had two columns of numbers, um, two columns by seven, and um, I wanted to get uh, it into this form here where you have a channel for every column. So I went to this menu on the that to chop and selected channel channel per column. So I had to change this menu from its default to be its, its default was names. I had to change it to, to values. So that gave me two channels, which corresponded to the two columns. And uh, confirm that by hitting D for dots, and here's the seven samples. So now we got them completely in chops, and then now we apply the uh, conversion formula, which, like we did, minus 32, 5 over 9, and we got a result that looked like this after we converted it back to chop uh, to dats, and it's not in the right form, but it's, I had to do what we call a transpose. So um, convert it into this transpose format, which gives you the, exactly the same thing as that, and we can go from there. So um, the next thing would be, and we'll, we'll end up pretty soon, uh, is to splice this stuff back in. The way to do that is to merge the stuff together. So we're starting from this table. So do a merge, merge that, and like, like the chop, merge these two things together. But uh, it's not the form that we wanted to. We wanted to actually take these things and replace that. So first of all, we, we don't have the headings in. We lost the headings here, so we have to actually insert them back low and high. You right click on the output of eval1 and add uh, insert, the insert dat. Uh, we can insert stuff at the top now. If we type low, space, high, we'll get um, column heading. So the space means um, put this in a different cell. So low, space, high. Gives a recovers our columns, and then we want to splice this into this table. So uh, instead of doing this, we uh, want to do what we call replace cells by column. There, and that's that's the replacement, and that's what we end up with. Yeah, and then just like there's a sorting chop and sort sop. There's one here for dats as well, so we can sort. And um, sort different different ways that we wanted to sort. Uh, in this case, let's say rows. And by actually uh, yeah, index one, we want to sort it by temperature. So uh, index one, which is a column one, um, that gives the uh, oops without touching the um, the heading. So uh, preserve first row. There. So now it's low to high. <laughs> so Saturday it's going to be lowest, and uh, Friday is going to be highest. Not much happening here in Holland in terms of temperature. Okay, that's it. Over in the other sister network, we go home and over to Dad's ref. There's a, a bunch of examples here as well. Um, that use DATS. Um, some of them are using DATS in Python to send messages to other computer. This one's uh, using DATS to, um, if I had multi-touch monitor, I'd be able to um, put all fingers here and then I get a row for every finger that's on the screen. The multi-touch in DAT is using what used with uh, containers. And uh, then there's the examples here of converting uh, the data of SOPs into DATS so you can actually look at the numbers. So this is the X, Y, and Z of each point here. And um, this relates to the polygons and, and here and so on and so on. So you can look at that. So this is basically a 
looking inside the data of a SOP at uh, what is what are the numbers actually in there, in case you're interested in it. Um, and down here is uh, sending messages using a DAT. So you click a click a click a button. It uses this bit of Python to send uh, send OSC message to here, and then theoretically this well, you would have these these operators here on another computer, so it would receive it from this computer to that computer, would send this message here of whatever this LFO value is. In a moment, every time you click it, it sends a message across via open sound control to the other machine. And it comes in the other machine via an OSC in DAT. So you can see all the messages coming in um, uh, one by one. Mm, you can't really see it, but anyway. You'd have to scroll at the bottom. Yeah, there they come in. Yeah, it's in the single file, the uh, same thing, the uh, chops dots dot 15 or 16. And save it up out there. Yeah. So, and, and so that's a start, and then there's all the stuff that's in the snippets for, for dots as well.